God is much more interested in changing us than he is giving us what we want. Now you will eventually get what you want if what you want is what God wants. And you'll even come to the point where if what you want is not what God wants, you won't even want it. At least you'll tell God, I want this, but if it's not what you want, then I don't want you to give it to me. I beg God, please don't ever give me anything that I ask you for if it's not your will. Because I've been in the, in the will of God and I've been out and I can tell you in is much better than out. How many of you have ever put together a jigsaw puzzle? Anybody? Has anybody ever done a real big one? Okay. Well, God gave me this as an example a few years ago and I just love it. You know, when God speaks something to your heart, gives you a dream or a vision to do something, whether it's business or, or ministry or whether you need a complete overhaul and you've got a vision of being the person God wants you to be, you usually buy into what God shows you based on the picture you see. <laughs> it's kind of like when you go out and buy a puzzle, nobody looks in the box to see what the pieces look like. You just get one that's got a good picture on the front of it. No, I have another one at home that I forgot to bring. It's 5,000 pieces. So we bought this one. It's 2,000 pieces. And if you notice, most of this thing is green and blue. <laughs> Which means when you get into it, there's a lot of sameness in the pieces. However, if you don't give up and you keep at it long enough, you'll eventually get the puzzle put together. Then usually after you do, it's not too long and you want to start something all over again. So whatever vision and dream you have right now, let me just tell you, when you finally get to your destination, it won't keep you satisfied too long and you'll be wanting to do some other thing because God has created us to want to reach and to grow and to do new things. So the first thing I want to tell you, and I want you to remember this, Make sure that you enjoy your journey because life is more about the journey than it is the destination. Now, I want you to think about that. When you get to wherever it is you think you want to be, that's going to be a thrill and you're going to be thrilled for a while, maybe a few days, maybe a few weeks. And it won't be long and you'll be reaching for something else. And so if we don't learn how to enjoy the journey, we can literally spend most of our lives being frustrated, trying to get to where we think we want to be. And it's really tragic when we don't enjoy the journey. Now, admittedly, some of it is a little more enjoyable than other things, but everything is for a purpose. And one of the things that's happening is we're getting experience. And just like you go out and apply for a job, they want to know what kind of experience you've got. God wants us to come with a little bit of experience too. We get different kinds of experiences. We pray to love everybody, but we don't want to have to love anybody that's not lovely. <laughs> Amen? And it's easy to tell people how they need to forgive until somebody just gut wrenches you and then you have to try to do it yourself. Have you ever noticed how much easier it is to tell other people what to do than it is to do it yourself? <laughs> One time I was in some kind of a situation and I was praying, oh God, show me what to do, show me what to do. God, what do you want me to do? He said, just do what you would tell somebody else to do <laughs> and you'll be perfectly fine. But anyway, if you get the idea I'm trying to point out, God's given you a picture of something that he wants you to do. Like 40 years ago when God called me to teach the word, all I really heard in my heart was, you're going to go all over the world and teach my word and have a very large ministry. Well, that was really kind of ridiculous. I don't even know why it is we believe the things that God says to us, except when he, when he says something to you, he also gives you a gift of faith to believe it. Now, that's why a lot of times you can believe things for your life that nobody else can believe. You get a gift of faith with it, and so it seems very reasonable to you, but other people are like, ha, you, you got to be kidding. There's no way that you could do that. And they just, so it ends up being discouraging. And so what happens then is when you open up this box,
Oh my, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, Lord have mercy. Do I really want to do this? You know, there's so many pieces to getting from where you are to where you want to be. And I want to see every one of you be somebody who doesn't just start, but you make it to the finish. John 17, 4, Jesus said, glorify me for I have completed the work that you have given me to do. One day years ago, I read that and I just started to weep and I thought, God, I want to be a finisher. I want to be a finisher. And so I just want to encourage you, it's good to be excited about starting. And I don't mean this to be discouraging, but you will get over being excited. <laughs> and there may be a few people now that are excited for you. They'll get over it too. <laughs> and the day will come when it's going to be you and God and the enemy trying to aggravate you. And you're going to have to decide if you really want to go all the way with God and do everything that he's asked you to do, or if you want to take the easy road and park somewhere and just stay there. Amen? Amen. We're going to go all the way through with God. I think there's probably, compared to the number of people that God gives a dream and a vision to, I think there's probably very few who actually finish and go all the way through. I think the greatest testimony I have, it's not surviving abuse, it's not this, that, something else. I think the greatest testimony I have is I'm still here. Amen. Amen. And when you can say that after 40 years, you know, when I started this, there, there were not arenas full of women that wanted to serve God. There was me and maybe two other ladies. And it was not a popular thing to do. And so I went through a lot of things that you guys won't have to go through. And let me tell you something, by the time you get from where you start to where you end up, there's a lot of things that you don't even really fully know how to explain to people that have happened between you and God. But you will be turned into a totally different person and God can use you in a great way if you just won't quit and give up. Amen. Let's all have a big praise for sticking with it. Now, you know, normally, normally we, and God even lets us do that. He'll let us do the easy stuff first. And so we usually put together the pieces that have got flat edges first. And we get an outline. And then you start. And see, if you were up here, you'd see everything here looks blue and green. Now, I don't know, you know, sometimes you ever get one of those pieces where you, you just... It just doesn't seem to fit anywhere. Has anybody in this room got a piece going on in your life right now that just doesn't seem to fit anywhere? Or maybe somebody's here, you're trying to make a piece fit somewhere. <laughs> and it just won't go. Is anybody here so fed up with putting together blue sky that you could just scream? You know, I worked at a church for five years and that was pretty good because the crowd came for the pastor and I got to preach and he believed for the money to pay the paychecks and I didn't have to do that and it was just a lot of fun. And then God called me to leave there and go north, south, east and west except nobody knew me north, south, east or west. And so trying to be childlike, I went to north St. Louis, east St. Louis, west St. Louis and south St. Louis. <laughs> And I did, and I started one, one teaching meeting once a month in each side of town. Well, for years and years and years and years, I did meetings of nine people and 12 people and 50 people and 60 people and 70 people. And man, if we got to 100, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. I got so tired of putting together blue sky that I could have screamed at the top of my voice. Does anybody here feel like you've been stuck in the same place? doing the same thing so long that if God doesn't give you another piece pretty soon, you're going to feel like throwing the whole puzzle away. <laughs> Amen. All right, now, having said that, I want to read you something. I've kept journals for most of the 40 years that I've been in ministry, and usually one of the first things I do every day is write in my journal. And, you know, you'll tell your journal things that you don't want to tell 
anybody else. And then sometimes you go back and read them 20, 30 years later, they're actually pretty hysterical. <laughs> and so I found this about a year ago and I just decided that I would share it with a few people because it's, it, it, it's just interesting. So on December the 26th, 1987, so that's been 29 years ago, I said, Christmas is over, God is good. From a spiritual standpoint, I've been having a very rough time. A lot of things for a while that I've been saying, oh, well, cast your care, Joyce, everything's going to be okay. But today, everything just blew up in my face. Dave and I had a discussion that wasn't good. He feels I have to control everything or I'm not satisfied. I feel he's wrong and being unfair. Anybody got an entry like that anywhere? We have a hard time communicating when we differ in our opinions, but this was the last straw. And everything I've been feeling but casting my care about has now come tumbling in on top of me. So here it is. I've been having a hard time getting my messages, at least much harder than usual. I've been having a hard time hearing from God. I've been feeling very little anointing. It seems that the more I've pressed in in the spirit, the more God hides and requires me to go strictly on faith. I've just had a breast removed because I had cancer. Now I have two more surgeries to go for plastic surgery. Our meetings, at least the attendance, have fallen off because of the holiday season. I've had a lot of weird feelings, lazy mind, bored, discontent, etc. All of this has come at once. I also feel that I just don't know how to pray anymore. I've really had a hard time praying. How many of you could tell I was having a bad day? Well, today it just all seems to be too much. God help me, I feel like I'm gonna go under, but I guess I won't. I trust he's doing something, and that's in big letters, but I don't know what it is. He's probably, I guess, wanting a greater degree of abandonment out of me. I'm not sure I can do it, but I'm willing to let God do it if he can. Dave always feels I'm at fault and it's never him. And to be honest, that's just really hard on my flesh. But I don't suppose it matters much. It's all pride anyway. <laughs> now, now here, here, this is where it gets really funny. I am really sorry to have to report. <laughs> that, <laughs> that I have had to tell the Lord tonight that I have gone as far as I can go. <laughs> I have been telling him for two years, take me deeper if you want to. I'm willing to do whatever you need me to do, but I really don't want to go on like this. I feel I've gone as far as I can go. I want the pressure to let up, and I would also like a few feelings. <laughs> Come on, anybody with me out there? I don't know for sure if God's going to let me out of this. He may not let me out, but I never really thought I would back down. So now on top of everything else, I now find out that I am a spiritual coward. <laughs> you know, it's good sometimes to just be let into the real things that are going on in people's lives sometimes, because if all people ever tell you who have victory is about their victory, and they never tell you what it took to get there and how many times they wanted to give up and quit, then you begin to think that there's something wrong with you. But let me tell you something, everybody that's gonna do anything amazing with their life is going to have to go through some of the similar things. Everybody, there's nothing wrong with you, you're just in training. Now, 11 years later, I saw this entry. Somebody say 11 years. 11 years. And this was December the 20th, 1998. And I said, well, I was reading this old notebook and thought I would give you an update on how my life is now. <laughs> See, this is, this is what you gotta look at. Things have changed drastically. I'm now on 375 television stations, 250 radio stations. Our ministry is very successful. I've changed drastically. I enjoy peace almost continually. I've continued all these years to have some health struggles, but in the midst of it all, God has given me grace to do all he's called me to do. It's been hard at times, but I can report that God is faithful. 
I now have four grandchildren, which now have become 11, plus one on the way. My youngest son was getting married in six weeks. He now has three sons of his own. Dave and I love each other very much and we get along really good almost all the time. <laughs> and in January, Dave and I will be married 50 years. Now, that's been 19 years ago and I won't bother to give you another update, but things are just really good. Now, what happened during those years? It's good to get a report here and then another one 11 years later, but what happened in those 11 years? And then what happened during the next 19 years? One main thing, I grew. <laughs> My ministry didn't grow all that much, but I grew. See, God is much more interested in changing us than he is in giving us what we want. I must repeat that. God is much more interested in changing us than he is giving us what we want. Now, you will eventually get what you want if what you want is what God wants. And you'll even come to the point where if what you want is not what God wants, you won't even want it. At least you'll tell God, I want this, but if it's not what you want, then I don't want you to give it to me. I beg God, please don't ever give me anything that I ask you for if it's not your will. Because I've been in the, in the will of God and I've been out and I can tell you in is much better than out. We all want to have a lot of fruit, but however much fruit you have, you've got to have roots that go just that deep. And some of the stuff that goes on behind closed doors that nobody else knows about and nobody else would even understand, that's you getting rooted and grounded in the things that God wants you to be rooted and grounded in, like His love, confidence, knowing who you are as an individual and not needing to compare yourself with somebody else, not being a people pleaser, <laughs> I hope to get around to it later if time permits but if not I just want to say this now if you don't learn how to say no when you know that God is saying no you will kill yourself trying to keep other people happy all the time amen we need to live deeper lives and what I mean by that is we have this carnal level your soul is your mind your will and your emotions and it doesn't tell you anything about God it only tells you about you my mind tells me what I think my will tells me what I want and my emotions tell me how I feel but God wants us to live much deeper than that he wants us to learn to live in the spirit and to always be willing to go with God no matter what we want what we think or how we feel I want to go to Luke chapter 5 and show you a great scripture. Verse 1, Now it occurred that while the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the message of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two boats drawn up by the lake, but the fishermen had gone down from them and were washing their nets. And getting into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Peter, he said to him, draw, draw a little bit away from the shore. And then he sat down and he continued to teach the crowd of people. When he stopped speaking, he said to Peter, put out into the deep. Everybody say deep. deep. Put out into the deep and lower your nets for a haul. How many of you would like a haul in your life? <laughs> or whatever it is, whether it's a haul of peace or joy or success or whatever it is. We all would love to have a giant spiritual dump truck back up to our house <laughs> and just dump out everything on the driveway that we want. Come on out into the deep and get ready for a haul. And in verse 5, Peter said, Master, we toiled all night exhaustingly and we caught nothing in our nets. So what's he basically saying? He's saying, you don't get it, Jesus. We've already been out there. We didn't catch anything. 
We don't really feel like doing this. We don't think it's such a good idea and we don't believe it's gonna work. But on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. Now, right there's the turning point. I don't wanna do this. I don't feel like doing it. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. But if you say to do it, come on, are you there? If you say to do it, if you say to do it, then it doesn't matter what I want, what I think, or what I feel, your will be done and not mine. No matter how hard it is, no matter how much it hurts, has God ever asked you to do anything that just seems so totally unfair? I mean, like so totally unreasonable. Most of you, if you're married, you know that men, <laughs> men are not very good at saying I was wrong. Matter of fact, some of them really stink at saying I was wrong. And they're not too quick to come and apologize. <laughs> and every time Dave and I would get into a tiff, God would tell me, now go make peace. Go make peace. And I finally said to the Lord one day, this is just not fair. It is not my turn. He, I apologized the last time. You need to talk to him. And... <laughs> But you know, I could not find any scripture in the Bible that said, make peace if it's your turn. <laughs> and it just seemed to me like God was constantly dealing with me about something. And Dave was just happy and, you know, just <laughs> going along. And I remember one day, I actually, I still remember where we were standing in the house. And I said to him, I thought, well, maybe God's dealing with, me, with him and he's just not saying anything. So I said, is God dealing with you about anything? Because I really wanted God to be dealing with him about something. Do you know anybody in your life you really are hoping God's dealing with them? And he looked kind of puzzled and he said, well, I don't think so. And I would think, God, how can you not be dealing with him? He's got all these problems that you need to fix. And by the way, he is over there. He lets me pick on him all the time. And uh, let me tell you something. Dave is just the best guy. I mean, he, you know, real love is letting somebody be all that they can be. And Dave has definitely done that in my life. And he loves me just the way I am, including all my spice. And so I like that too. But anyway, man, I wanted God to deal with him and not just me. And it seems so unfair. I mean, I wanted him to come and say, you know, God's really been dealing with me that I need to treat you better. And God's really been dealing with me that, you know, I'm a little stubborn sometimes. And God's been dealing with me that I've got a problem with pride. But I never heard any of that. Never. Never. I would just be getting my flesh crucified and he'd be out playing golf, having a good time. <laughs> and I remember murmuring to God one time because it seemed like I knew all kinds of people that did all kinds of things that I didn't feel like God would let me do. And I thought, I mean, really? I mean, God, are you really not dealing with them? Why do, they, why do they get to see movies like that and you won't let me see them? Why do they get to do this and you won't let me do it? And you know what he said to me? And somebody here today needs to hear this. He said, listen, Joyce, you've asked me for a lot. Do you want it or not? So here's the thing. And if you don't remember anything else I say today, please remember this. If you've asked God for a lot, if you've asked God to do a great work through you, then guess what? You don't get to compare yourself with what God is doing in anybody else's life. This is between you and him. And there's probably gonna be a lot of things that you're gonna see other people get to do that you're not gonna get to do. If you've asked God for a lot, do you want it or not? Amen? So he said, come on out in the deep and get ready for a haul. Well, master, we don't think it's going to work. We're exhausted. 
but on the ground of your word, I will lower the nets again. And verse 6 is so beautiful. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, so many that their nets were at the point of breaking, and they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and take hold with them. And they came and filled all the boats so that they all began to sink. So what's the message there? If we do what God wants us to do and we live a deeper life and we don't live according to what we want, what we think and what we feel, then we will have a hall of blessings in our life, not only for ourselves, but so much that we'll be able to help all the people around us that are needy. Is that what you want? All right. Well, what happens when we begin to grow? Well, we learn to live deeper. We learn to seek God for who He is and not just what He can do for us. Man, was that ever a big transition in my life. One morning when I was praying, the Lord challenged me to take a real good look at, my, at how I was praying and compare how I was praying to the way the Apostle Paul prayed and the way Jesus prayed. And by the time I got done, I was quite embarrassed because all I did was ask for stuff for the flesh and I don't know if you know it or not, but in all the prayers that Paul prayed for the church, you can't find one where he asked God to give them a thing or to relieve them from any of the things they were going through. He prayed that they would be able to endure whatever came with a good temper. I've never yet had anybody come and say, Joyce, would you pray for me that I can go through whatever I need to go through and still stay sweet and happy? <laughs> never once in 40 years has anybody asked me to pray that. But we need to be able to pray, God, I want your will in my life. And if it's not comfortable, then keep me sweet and keep me happy because I just want to do this the way you would do it if you were here.